Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's read Proverbs 7 and verse 1. Okay. Proverbs 7 and verse 1. Verses, uh, maybe yeah, a few verses. Um, it goes like this. My son, keep my words and treasure my commandments. Sorry, my commands within you and my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your nearest kin, that they may keep you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words. Okay, so um, several things we hear about how we could consider the word of God, how what we should do with the word of God. Um, so the instruction is, you know, says, my son, keep my words. Okay, so obviously these are words of wisdom that um, uh, that the father is um, instructing the son. So he's saying, my son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Okay, and my law as the apple of your eye. Okay, so what does keeping the word mean? Keeping my word mean? It is to protect. It is to uh, it is to make sure that it is retained. Right. It is not something that is forgotten. Yeah. Not something that is forgotten. It's not something that is um, just um, you know not retained, right? So it means to retain the word of words and treasure my commands within, right? I don't know whether we look at the commands of God as something to be treasured. Treasure is something of great value, where we protect it and keep it and uh, keep it safe, right? So it's, treasure my commands within you. And keep my commands and live, right? And my law as the apple of your eye. Again, something that is treasured, something that is protected. You know, we are very careful about what happens to our eyes, right? We, we normally we protect. You know, by reflex, we we protect. We blink so many times so that there's no. Um, you know, one thing. One thing is to keep the eyes moist. We blink so many times. You know, I don't know. The scientists say, okay, so many times in a minute, we actually blink our eyes, and and uh, it's also a protection, right, against dust or anything. So he's saying, yeah, you know, keep my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablets of your heart, so that they, the words, will keep you, right, protect you keep you and it talks about immorality and immoral person uh, but I just want to say that the word of God keeps us protects us right but our response to the word of God our, our how we need to treat the word of God is to you know is to keep the word of God is to nourish or, or is to treasure the word of God is to keep the word of God you know as if it's the apple of our eyes if we would if we would ha estimate the word of God or esteem the word of God in that manner, then the word of God keeps us. You know, the, the wisdom in the word, the truth of the word, it's so ingrained in us that it protects us from going astray, protects us from, uh, from any of the influences that would lead us astray. Right? It's not only when it comes to you know, the, the things of the flesh or it, it's anything, you know, any kind of influence that takes us away from God's wisdom, that takes us away from the will of God, away from the ways of God. The word of God protects us, right? So, but it requires us to treat God's word in this manner, okay? So let's pray and then let's say, let's just commit, you know, ourselves to God and say, Lord, I want to esteem your word in this manner, right? Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this instruction in your word, about your word, Lord. So we we thank you. We pray that, we'll, Lord, we will esteem your word in this manner, that we will keep your word, Lord, that we will treasure your commands, that we will keep your law as the apple of our eye, God. Um, even as you've instructed, Lord, uh, your word says that we will keep the word and live. Master, we pray in all those areas of our lives where we are, just existing, Lord, where there is no life. I pray, Lord, that even as we choose to keep your word, that we will just live, that your word will cause us to thrive and flourish and protect us, Lord, 
from all influences, taking us away, Lord, from you, the source of life itself, Lord. So, Father God, we, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands, Lord. Enable us, give us that, that kind of uh, heart, Lord, towards your word. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah, so we we've been looking at the you know the steps that we can take in order to um, you know in order to walk in wholeness or uh, walk out of um, uh, I mean or, or to receive healing and deliverance right in a in a healing and deliverance we've been looking at a few steps here um, so you know the, the first couple of things that we said was uh, repentance and and asking God for forgiveness. So the question is, you know, are these two things the same thing or similar? Repentance and forgiveness, asking God. Or are they different? Huh? Yeah. So is repentance different from for asking God for forgiveness? Different. Okay. So what is the difference? Yeah, you can use the mic. Uh, so repentance is more right. Confession, uh, and uh, it may not, you know, uh, include for asking forgiveness. Okay. So what is repentance? Change in mind. Okay. So it's a, it's a decision to change, a decision to uh, do things differently. So change it. So change it. Change in action, yeah. Uh, change in mindset, really, you know, leading to that, right? So change. So asking God for forgiveness is to receive, you know, to ask Him that uh, we were wrong, to be remorseful, to say that, you know, wherever we have missed, and to ask Him for uh, forgiving us and to restore us, right? So that's the thing. Okay. Third one we we saw was to believe in the completed word of work of Christ. Okay, the completed work of Christ on the cross. So, I want to ask you, like, um, w you know, what does the finished work of Christ on the cross uh, mean to you? Just one thing. Okay, uh, online students also, right? What aspect of your life is covered by the completed work of Christ? We'll start with Sri Radha and then we'll just go all the way. And uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, online students also. You know, what does the completed work of Christ mean to you? It gives us a victorious life. Over, like we can overcome everything by that power. Overcome everything. Like. All the evil things, whatever we are going through, like tempting us, we can overcome all those things by the power of cross. Okay, just we'll take one thing. Okay, so the completed work of Christ on the cross to receive that means that you receive power over temptation, which seems to maybe you know bring you down or slow you down, you know, or trip you up. Right, so okay, that's that's one thing. Next, receiving from the completed work of Christ. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you just go ahead. Now, what is what is it mean to you? It means something, right? Completed work of Christ. Uh, yeah, online students also, you know, you can use them. So it's a, it's a big thing. That's why I can't say in one word, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> So mostly for me, it's like a hopeful life that 
So it means that um, we work by goes against all hopelessness. Whatever creates hopelessness, the completed work of Christ brings about hope. Right? Okay. Nikki? Free from sin. Freedom from, from sin. sin. Freedom. From sin. Okay. Freedom. Right. Francis? I mean, like, forgiven from the all the sins and given the authority all of the like mm, authority like all these like jesus defeated satan on the cross so that authority what before satan is, is given to us so we have the all the authority yeah. so authority is lost because of so you, you have received that authority yeah. mm. Uh, his his um, <clears throat> the cross is given the uh, open the grace of God for me I mean in every area of your life mm -hmm. and like Bible say you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places because Jesus has done now we are seated with Him in mm -hmm. the heaven. So, okay, so the grace of God, yes, we have access to the grace of God, um, and then. Our position in Christ, right? we are, our identity changes because we are seated in the, in the heavenly places because of His finished work. Yes, and then mm, it it made me worthy, and um, and it gave me the identity in Christ, uh, who actually I am, and it all. Uh, so yeah, so worth talks about value, worth, uh, identity. So the completed work of Christ, um, yeah, Jack and I, um, I have been forgiven, redeemed, uh, righteousness, access, right? Confidence to call him our father, right? So which means access, relationship, so many things, right? So, so this, we, you know, we need to really consider the finished work of Christ. Okay? And there's so much, there's so much that we have as believers because of what he did for us all. And, and, and we know that cross is at the center of all that that is happening in our lives. Uh, cross is at the center. right? Um, so it, it is very important that we understand, receive more revelation about this truth of the finished work of Jesus on the cross and, and receive. Right? Every time Maybe there's an opportunity for us to take part in the Lord's table, communion. You know, that's another opportunity to think about one aspect or a different aspect of what the Lord did because of the finished work on the cross and what we can receive, which is rightfully ours, because of what He is, you know, out of His grace, He is actually extending to us, right? Coming from the finished work of the cross. Okay, so. So the big things like you know forgiveness, redemption, you know restoration, identity, all that. So, so the third thing is this: when we talk about you know uh, finished work of the cross, it's not just a historic event, but it's something that's affecting us today, and which can affect us now in the moment, and we can receive now. Right? It's all powerful, and um, you know physical healing, emotional healing, etc. Right? Fourth thing, we said, and then this is where we stopped. I think. About releasing forgiveness, okay, um, and being specific about it, okay. Forgiveness for everything, and forgiveness most, most, you know, horrible things that we may have gone through because of people's behavior, choices, um, etc. So we receive healing for that, and healing starts when we actually release forgiveness. Okay, so, so how should you feel in order to forgive? So, is feeling required for forgiveness? You know, do you should you feel like forgiving and therefore forgive, or can you just? Mm, not necessarily. So, have you tried forgiving without feeling that sense of yeah? Uh, no, is it possible? Okay. Okay. So it is possible, but it is definitely challenging. Yeah. I mean, whom we are forgiving, correct. That is why you know, depending on the person only, we 
either feel like forgiving or we don't feel like forgiving because and also it depends on what is the nature of thing that or nature of hurt or the kind of thing that we have um you know we have gone through whatever hurt we have gone through whatever trauma that we have gone through it's uh, it's like that right so um you know one of the persons who went through uh you know this is about uh, the second world war uh, one of the persons who went through uh you know horrendous torture in the hands of one of these german soldiers okay so this person went through so much and he he writes by saying that when they when he when they put him in the same room and you know, it was actually a, a, a trial it was a court uh, so when they put both the people in the same room he just he it was the the emotion that he felt was so strong that uh, he felt like throwing up you know, it was so strong so strong on the inside he, you know because he, here was this person who had tortured him so much here was this person right before his eyes and they are actually in the court room because trial and so on after the war uh, obviously that person is a war criminal and so he's there to you know testify against him and he says that you know when they put him in the same room he was the emotions are so powerful that he felt like vomiting you know physically that was affecting the emotion was affecting him physically okay so the question is that you know how do we release forgiveness and we have such feelings or emotions that are holding us back how do we do it physically as a human beings it's very hard mm. uh, maybe uh, see when 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 i speak about me also when uh, if i think about myself as anam i can't forgive if i think uh, according to christ it's 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 nothing like what i heard that i, I saw a video pastor recently that it's in a court room in us uh, so there is a person standing there the victim uh, this this other person is telling Uh, this guy who is uh, so he 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 raped and he killed two of his daughters and wife three people and he was standing there after the judgment he told uh, i'll forgive this guy you know not to the, the 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 i mean yeah his father so he's telling uh, i forgive i forgive because christ forgiven us so you just lead a good life and there everyone were crying i was thinking i how a human being can forgive like that and then he quoted this christ christ forgiven us as a human being we can't if if we really went to su- such place like we we actually we got we want everything in the world if we really reach that place yeah so the emotions actually you know add uh, act as a deterrent in the sense uh, they they tell us okay this person is uh, you know you need your need for revenge need to punish need to you know make that fe- person feel bad so goes all against forgiveness at the same time uh, according to what jesus did for us and the uh, and the example and the standard for forgiveness is forgive others as god in christ forgave forgive us right so so that's the standard so which means that um, when it comes to forgiveness or releasing forgiveness it is a decision that we make it's an act of obedience trusting god and not based on our emotions right so so if we understand that yeah i'm feeling terrible i'm i'm even having this you know this anger i don't know i think even having this anger but when i look at the word of god when i see that how christ forgave me and that's the model that i have that's the example that i have 
So it's an act of my will. I'm making a choice. I'm being obedient, and I choose to choose to forgive, right? But first and foremost, I go to God and ask for a willingness, even for that willingness, because you know we don't start at the place of being willing. We start at the place of being unwilling, right? Um, so we are unwilling. We do not want anything of that. But then we ask God, God, give me, or bring me to that place of being willing to even, you know, forgive, release forgiveness. Okay. So Nina, John, um, by listening to the counsel of the Holy Spirit, if we would quieten our hearts uh, in any situation, He will guide us what we need, or even think forgiveness is what we have uh, or even think forgiveness is what we have received wholesale so how can we not yeah so the, the thing is yeah we we know that this is what we need to do how do we get to that place right okay so it's a it's a choice it's an act of obedience trusting god right and not in our emotions not in our feelings right okay so so Another thing that helps us to relieve, release forgiveness is it's not that we are saying what that person did was right. So many times that stops us, no? When we want to forgive, it is like we think, okay, does that mean that whatever that person said, did, uh, you know, it's all right? Am I saying that, am I accepting that what that person did was right? Am I... You know, so that stops us. You know, I don't want to forgive because I want to tell you that what you did was wrong, right? So I don't want to forgive, right? So, so when we when we are saying, you know, what we're releasing forgiveness, we are saying that what that person did was wrong. It was injustice, right? It was wrong, but we are going to beyond that and saying, despite that, I forgive. So that's so there are two different things, right? So when we when we think of it that way, then maybe it's it's a little bit easier to say, okay, I forgive. What you did was wrong, but I forgive. I forgive in the way God in Christ forgave me. What I did was wrong, but He forgave. Right? Despite that, He forgave. Okay, you have a question, yeah? Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first one is like. Uh, can we forgive and also ask God to take vengeance or revenge on our behalf? Like David. We forgive like what they have done to us. Uh, I'll forgive him, but God, for what he has done, you do it. So basically. Uh, and. Uh, there are some verses here. Yeah, God takes vengeance. So, can we also be in that position of forgiving them and uh, asking God to do justice for it? Because, uh, or like, especially talking about uh, many things that happens in the world, like we fight for justice, like we do the candle rallies and all. We fight for justice, but also following uh, followers of Christ. We also have to forgive the people who have done wrong. But also, we we also as humans, we all seek for justice for what happened, right? So can we also forgive and also ask God to do justice? Yeah. So, so justice, meaning this right should be corrected. This wrong should be corrected. Sorry. Yeah, so maybe, you know, according to the law, whatever... Is a, whatever the law says that maybe imprisonment or restoration or whatever it is, uh, justice should be done. Okay, so so we can we can. But you know we when you look at the New Testament, <laughs> okay, uh, when you look at the what the Lord Jesus says, you know he, what he did and what he said. He said, uh, "Love your enemies, bless those who." Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Right? So, so you bless. You release a blessing. Now, see, the thing is that the natural course of the law, let's say a person is uh, uh, arrested for whatever wrong he has, he or she has done, and uh, the natural course of the law, you know, we can't just take them out. We can't just say, okay, um, you, know, you know, consider as nothing. 
uh, etc so you can retract your statements etc you know but then uh, if there's a natural course of law to be taken that is fine okay but then our heart our attitude should be to release a blessing okay so we can say lord i you know just bless them prosper them we can do that Um, you can see. Um, it's, it's not. It's not. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Just uh, use the mic. Yeah. Yeah. And like, uh, if we are releasing forgiveness, is it like? we are uh, like keeping the justice aside because are we keeping justice aside in the sense uh, we don't want justice to be done yeah like any, any particular uh, uh, okay oh uh, yeah for incident like for what huh? I, I don't know but from what anand have said uh, there's a person who have raped and uh, if we want to forgive them, it's actually telling don't punish him. It's okay even if you not get justice for what things he have done. So mercy. Okay, so justice demands punishment. So mm -hmm. maybe being merciful, he might get a reduced sentence. You know, that is possible. But as a as a person, as a criminal who is who is you know who is prone to repeat this whole thing, justice is that he be kept in a correctional facility so that he is not a threat to others upon release. Okay, so so I feel that that needs to be done. That needs to be done. Like he, he needs to be in a correctional facility, like uh, like a prison, where you know maybe he is. You know, temperamentally, he's like that. This is what he does. So he cannot be. Uh, we cannot release him into society where he would repeat this thing. You know, repeat this offense and create damage. So, um, yeah. So the act of justice would be okay. Maybe it's a reduced sentence, whatever. But then, uh, I would say that he needs this needs to be corrected so that you know, when you and, and ultimately he's released, he can be. Uh, he won't repeat that offense. Yeah, can both go? Yeah. The Graham stains, sorry. Hmm. Yeah. So his wife said that. Yeah, I forgive. Um, I don't have anything personally against him. I forgive him, and uh, say, but uh, I think yeah, I I don't I didn't really follow the case fully, like whether he was. He was released, right? They they just released him. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but um, I really don't know. Yeah, I can probably check. What does he? Okay. Uh, yeah, Ravali, you have a question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sorry. Um. So in this. Uh, process of uh, forgiveness um, even though we uh, release forgiveness we acknowledge what they have done wrong and also we release mercy from our, sin, our end as God forgives us and all of that but how do we really know or recognize that we actually forgave them uh, you know do you think like how do we recognize uh, we forgave them from all the hurt, pain. Not just we are exped, uh, we are not experiencing it anymore, because people say time heals, and it's true. As as we, you know, time passes by, the hurt and the pain, the intensity really reduces, and the same feelings that you have 
um you know the rage or anger or you know the feeling of uh, yeah i need justice might not prevail over time and you will be settling over the feelings and stuff but uh, does it mean that we forgave them or we just used to the situation what happened uh, you know to us and we wanted to move on yeah i think that's a very interesting interesting question how do i know that i've truly forgiven right um so yeah no, no, no i have released forgiveness yeah i yeah that's uh, that's a lovely question so how do i really know that i have forgiven okay so a uh, couple of things one is it's a uh, you know the releasing forgiveness itself is an act of obedience trusting god so it's, it's an act of faith um where we're saying god you know uh, i'm just going with your word and i'm and i'm forgiving okay so when we forgive when we actually do that um initially maybe there's no emotions you know we're just doing it uh, um unemotionally as an act of obedience we're just doing that releasing okay but when we take that step step you know when we say lord i'm willing we are actually opening up our life our hearts um our emotions everything to be touched and healed by the holy spirit you know till that time we are actually closed right so when we say lord i am willing and i i forgive so we are actually opening up our hearts our lives our minds everything emotions for the work of the healer who is the holy spirit the comforter the healer so so he starts and he brings about healing like in our lives right so so that is why that is why we you know the whole intensity of pain and everything goes down you know it's because of his work of healing and we also receive he, uh, that healing you know, from him and yes there are times when these thoughts come back you know depending on how deeply entrenched the trauma or the pain is these thoughts come back you know these thoughts come back and along with that some sense of emotion like attached to that thought um but when we say no i have forgiven and i will continue you know i will continue to declare that that i have forgiven this person then we realize that okay that intensity of pain just leaves and we are able to you know even think about the past uh, without the without the uh, you know emotion Uh, without that pain right without that same intensity of pain and because we know that it is healed you know we're able to talk about it we're able to analyze it we're able to even maybe testify it about it you know you share it as a testimony saying this is the testimony of god's healing uh, in me and this is the testimony of how he enabled me to forgive so that i would say that would be the path of um, you know how we are closed and then we are open when we actually make that choice to forgive to release forgiveness and god does that work of healing right so yeah so when we reach that place where you know see the time does not heal actually uh you know funnily this this morning i was just thinking about one particular instance that happened uh, i think this happened very many years ago and uh, like i was just feeling that you know the whole emotion of I was just had a conversation that I had with this person and that person got very upset and then said some things and I and remember you know feeling this all these uh, uh you know maybe I was just upset and uh, uh, you know so I was just thinking about it you know I I don't know why that train of thought happened and so on so so then I said oh god I I guess I really need to forgive that person intentionally I've not done that you know so time actually does not heal it i'm talking about like i don't know 20 years 30 years you know something that happened and then something triggered that uh, memory so um yeah time does not heal but um but when we actively intentionally release forgiveness and that's what starts the healing process um so how do i know that you are forgiven yeah you don't have any more pain that um that thing does not trigger emotions of um, you know it also it also you know forgiveness releasing forgiveness and the renewing of our mind you know that also goes um closely because you've renewed your mind to the truth that okay i'm not going to 
you know, I'm not going to hold bitterness anymore because this is what the word of God says. I'm not going to hold this against that person because the so it's also very closely tied to the renewing of our mind to the instruction of God's word about that matter. Right. So it also goes hand in hand. So yeah, so your whole behavior, your thoughts about that, everything changes and you know it doesn't affect you anymore. So you you have forgiven that person. Uh, thanks, Pastor. Uh, one more question. Yeah. Uh, so when we are talking about uh, like this discussion about having um, justice and sorry, excuse me, all of that. Uh, I remember once uh, we we were having this sermon and this statement where uh, mercy times judgment. That's what uh, happens to us in our life as well. So. Um, so in what cases mm. uh, that we need to take that step and uh, need to report or uh, you know uh, maybe uh, legally or in terms of, i am not i'm saying justice in terms of okay, this has to be told outside you know even though you have forgiven that person uh, mm. you know but it has to be we need to be vocal about it vocal about it mm. and in what cases even though you know uh, being vocal about it doesn't really uh, only ruins their life and doesn't really uh, you know um, i think i'm giving asking the question and giving the answer at the same time <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so what so time we we decide we have to be vocal or we need not to be vocal about it you know what i mean to say that so when you say vocal about it you're saying um, making sure that you know whatever justice I mean, Demands in the justice. sense, the incident happened needs to be, you know, uh, told. Or sometimes mm. it might, uh, you know, what situations may be an example or so where incident need not to be told out. And uh, even though we, we, even though there is the need for, uh, you know, justice, but uh, we won't be vocal about it or something like that. Mm. So we won't report that matter. And yeah, we won't more. report that matter, we, mm -hmm. but it is worth having, uh, you know, you know what, in the terms, if you're talking about justice, yeah, it is worth having, you know, justice to us, but mm -hmm. we won't report it types. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I really don't know how to go about it, but then maybe, you know, I'm just thinking of a situation. Let's say there's a theft. Okay. Somebody came, somebody stole something from me. So, and then, you know, I, I personally decide to forgive that person okay maybe whatever reason maybe i think that okay that person was in need and therefore he stole and therefore you know i have forgiven him but the um, the the bigger picture is this that other people's lives also should not be affected right so that i'm just thinking you know i'm just thinking out loud, other people's lives should not be affected because of this offense being repeated. So with, with that in mind, I I would report, you know, saying that such and such a thing happened and uh, therefore that person needs to be, um, you know, brought to justice because I don't want this damage to be done in the lives of other people. So from that perspective, yes, uh, I personally would report it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So that this, uh, whatever you know, damage it, it doesn't affect others' lives. Uh, if you know, if if it has that kind of a capacity, right? Um, so that's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, because it depends on case to case, right? So let's say, for example, if a, let, let's say a family member, you know, wrongs me. Maybe something he does, he or she does, you know, something financially or whatever. Um, so I would overlook that. Uh, I would overlook that. I would forgive. I would overlook. And but I would also tell the person that what they did was wrong. But I, I'm willing to forgive. You know, I'm taking the hit. I'm willing to forgive. Um, that, but I'm, you know, but I would point out what they did was wrong. So. So I would be merciful. I'm not going to take them to court or whatever. But um, but I will tell them that this needs to be, you know, they cannot repeat it. So I'm you know looking at it case by case. Um, I hope that helps. 
Yes, Pastor. I am. Yeah, that helps. You mean to say that if that particular person what has done to you, uh, you think it has an it might impact many other people. Yeah. Um, you know, it's worth reporting and be vocal about. It's worth it. repeat re reporting so that it does, it doesn't get repeated and other people's mm -hmm. lives are not damaged in a similar way. You know, personally, okay, I, I forgive, but then you know, as a protective thing. I would personally report it, is what I okay. think. Yeah, yeah, Pastor, makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so um, so we we release forgiveness. We also receive uh, healing. You know, um, for as we release forgiveness, right? Uh, and it could be some something simple, something small. Uh, but we might be still holding on to it and not really dealt with it. So it just helps, right, uh, to deal with it and make a make a decision, make a choice, saying, okay, you know, I'm not going to think about this because I'm going. It's it's dealt with. I, you know, I'm releasing forgiveness about this. And I'm not going to hold an offense about this. Um, so things like that, right? But one very important aspect is uh, of forgiveness is. Uh, uh, is also forgiving oneself, forgiving yourself, right? Because what what we do is we punish ourselves many times, you know. Even after, uh, you know, the we punish ourselves. We say, okay, I'm not worthy. So I let go of certain things. I tell myself certain things. I, you know, I, um, so like for example, uh, I'll just tell you a very simple thing happened. Like in the sense. Um, I think it was, I was doing my management studies, and then I flunked in one paper in the first semester. And then, um, so then, as a way of punishing myself, I told myself that uh, you know I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to uh, get the fees for the last whatever exams and everything from my parents. I'm going to try and manage it on my own. Okay, things like that. Right, even though. It's not a big deal for my parents to pay the fees for the. So I said, okay, no, this is how. Um, another thing, uh, you know, some 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 things like that, right? Where we are not able to forgive our choice, which landed us in certain situations. So we take, we punish ourselves by withholding certain things from us, from ourselves, or thinking ourselves in something uh, in certain ways. Or doing certain things for us, you know, for ourselves. Um, well, one extreme end of it is self harm, right? Self harm, uh, where we say, okay, physically we harm ourselves to punish ourselves, right? So that could be one extreme. The other extreme way could be, you know, we withhold whatever good um, happens to us, we withhold. Uh, we don't want to feel happy. Maybe some things are happening. Or we don't want to feel happy. We say, okay, this is what I did. Therefore, I'm not going to be happy. This is what I did. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm not going to be um, experiencing these emotions. Right? You, um, you get what I'm saying, right? So, so the thing is to um, actually, when it comes to releasing forgiveness, to forgive ourselves. Um, so that's a very important aspect of it, right? Because when God forgives, when God forgave us, um, He did it despite all that we went through, all that we did. He forgave us. So how can we not forgive ourselves? Okay. So yeah. So uh, yeah. For me personally. You know, the, the one thing that I had to forgive myself was, um, see, I was a good student in, in class 10. I, I did very well, did well in maths, did well in, you know, whatever. But when it came to 11th standard and uh, 12, you know, I did, uh, like, I just played the fool, did not study. Okay, So final exam, did very poorly, could not, uh, could not even, did not even get the marks enough to uh, go for engineering or medicine, whatever. Right, so I felt very disappointed. I felt very disappointed that I disappointed my parents. Okay, so that was the thing. You know, they gave me so much opportunity. They made so much of sacrifices, 
and uh, you know they did all this so i felt very very disappointed and so i had a very very low esteem of myself for many years i could not forgive you know, how can i do this you know to my parents you know, they gave me so much they gave me so much opportunity i wasted all that so you know a very very low esteem so this was like a heavy thing in my mind always i wasted opportunities i wasted things so i i wouldn't forgive myself for for a long time okay so um and that would show up in other things like lack of confidence um when lack of confidence in front of successful people like it will show up um and um yeah uh, low self esteem and and so on why because i chose not to i chose to punish myself um yeah so i don't know what your experience is but you know we can pray this prayer like uh, it goes like this right it says heavenly father in jesus name i receive healing from self inflicted wounds through personal mistakes wrong choices and wrong decisions i have made okay so we can you can mention that right what are those self inflicted um things right what is it that you inflicted on yourself what is it that you tell yourself what is it that you withhold from yourself what reward that you hold back from yourself right so and then mention that specifically and then also say heavenly father in jesus name i forgive myself just as you have forgiven me i believe that you are bigger than my mistakes i believe that you are greater than wasted time and you can restore time right i believe you are able to restore resources that i have wasted okay so yeah so that's something that we can pray specifically uh to release forgiveness uh over our own selves okay 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 we'll take a break and come back yeah okay